Greetings, Mars here, and welcome to episode 15 of my modded Factorio playthrough. On this episode, we're going to work on getting tin and bronze produced. Kind of a lot has to happen here. So, to start with, let's just get these ingots ready. So, tin is the simple one of the two, where we tin ore goes in, and then plates come out. And also, we can make uh, tin copper wire as well. So let's research that. Uh, lead is a little more complicated because we need oxygen gas, but we just researched the ability to make it, so we can do that as well. And actually, we should probably do fluid control so we get these uh, inline tanks, make it easier to store the gases that we're going to produce as a result of that. And these pipes or these uh, valves can help too. Okay. So tin is produced from Bob Modium. So let's come in here. Let's put it back in the uh, production line for Sephrite because this working on tin is also going to give us the same crushed stone, regular stone, turn them into bricks uh, production line. So if we put the sorting on this side, uh, we could have it where it'll update the amount of bricks that we need without having to do separate production lines and all that. So the less work you do, the better. So we want to produce tin ore. Which is crushed bobmodium sorting. Um, let's just say... So we don't want that linked. Let's say one output for now. But we need crushed bombodium, which comes from a crusher, and then the bombodium ore, which gets drilled. How much do we want to produce? Well, we do have a uh, relatively simple ratio here of two sorters to two crushers and then the associate assembling machines there. And see, that's gonna require 30 drills, because uh, Bobmonium's a lot harder to mine, 250% compared to just regular or 100%. So that's gonna require 30 drills, and I don't even know if we're gonna fit 30 drills on there, but. So there's no point in making this any bigger than that, because that's all we're gonna fit. Okay, so if we go back here, um, unlike with sapphire, where we create copper and iron, both of which are useful, we're now going to be creating bike product that we don't have as much use for. In other words, silicon, which we can't really do anything with right now. Um, it's mainly meant for making like circuit boards and whatever. We can turn it into glass, but we don't really need much glass right now. So it's going to basically be a byproduct that's going to sit around. So that's something to keep in mind. But we can come up here, click on the tin ore, and say we want to turn it into plates. But we need the actual research to be done first <laughs> before it'll let us do that. And we will need a bunch of miners. How many? I don't know. A lot. <laughs> okay. Bamonium drilling is done. It's probably using a ton of power, but it's okay so far. Okay, now that tin research is complete, we can go back here and put the smelting in. There we go. We want tin ingots. Link it by input, and then there we have our half of a blast furnace. And then one induction machine into three casting machines, and then there's our plates. There's actually more things we can do with tin besides just turning it into plates, but for now, to keep this simple, 
Uh, I'll just have it listed like this. So we'll automatically update the amount of uh, stone and crushed stone that's involved. Now we're going to have nine units of stone, which is too much for one belt. But we're not that far away from being able to build the next a tier of transport belt. We'll probably have to handcraft it for a little bit until we put it on the on the bus, but this won't be as much of a problem as it was before. Hey, okay, and then the fluid control's done. Great. Go back to increasing our character's abilities. So we need to make this bigger. And that involves moving this again. Before we do that, let's just see how much it's going to take for the lead as well. So we'll search uh, let's do lead, which is the rubite sorting. We'll work with two of those, which requires the two crushers, and then a bunch of drills. <laughs> 24 drills. Let's just change the order, make it look nice and clean. Put that up at the top, and now that will produce nickel as the byproduct. And then lead, which we want. Nickel, we can actually process into some useful stuff. Um, but to keep this simple, we'll do that in a separate step. So for now, we'll just worry about the lead. So we'll turn lead ore into lead ingots, which will require oxygen and produce sulfur dioxide gas, which... Uh, I don't think we can vent that right now, but we kind of don't want to because that's a very early source of sulfur. So we want to keep that. We don't want to waste it. But we can follow this down. Turn the lead ingots into molten lead, and the molten lead turns into plates. We can do the oxygen gas on uh, this production line or put it out here but it might actually be better to put it out here uh, and share that across everything else. That'll make a little more sense later. Um, actually, there's some other kind of simple things we can do. It, it doesn't make too much of a difference. You see how it says it's requiring coal? Well, we can come through here and change this into carbon, which we are now using to power the factory. So if we upgrade these blast furnaces, we'll update the numbers as well. So now, let's see, still coal. Where's that coal coming from? Oh, the uh, stone. Okay, so since we have that line done, we kind of scoot it up. You see how it's starting to get quite a bit that we have to scroll. So at some point, uh, a production line gets too big, and too complicated, and you want to split it up that has updated the stone to now we require 20 stone furnaces. And we have it's at 12 or 10 so we need to double this in size. Let's see. Didn't quite copy everything we needed. Okay, that is upgraded. Let's add the Bob Modium to the arm. And we need one of these. So let's copy something like this, and we can uh, fix the rest of it in a bit. Output yeah, priority to the. Let's just say to the right. Have that be tin. And then on the other side, we'll go the silicon. And then we just need a half of a blast furnace. And then the induction furnace and casting machine. We'll worry about those later. We'll just do the blast furnace for now. And then the silicon, since we have nothing better to do with it for now, we could probably just hold on to it. We do kind of need it for glass, but we'll worry about that when we actually uh, need the glass. Oh, well, we can do it short term here, so let's see. 
Okay, let's set up a silo. A nice stone furnace. Which we can uh, have put our glass into there. We could belt it down here for the lights. But we don't really make that many of them. And it would be a small inconvenience to carry them over there just for occasionally making lights. So to keep the belts as simple as possible, uh, I'm going to do it in that way. Uh, I think that is good enough to test. Let's see if it works. get this tin all the way down here. Now there's kind of a reason why I wanted to do it in this order. So that's because now we're doing alloys and with alloys there are uh, multiple combinations of ingots you can use. So right here it's pretty straightforward. You know the, the iron goes into the iron, creates iron plates, copper goes in copper. So when you first start you might think why not just put that stuff up here. It's like well you can actually do alloys and you have different uses for your different materials. Now solder is an example of how we can use uh, tin and lead, but you can also do bronze. Let's see, where is it? There we go. And bronze requires tin and copper. Might as well get that researched. So to avoid having this setup be too complicated, one way of doing things is to try to space things out based on where the ingots are needed. So copper is going into here, and then to make bronze we need copper in tin which we can do here. And then tin plates can be done here. And then over here we can do solder, which requires tin and lead. And then over here we can do lead. And that's just kind of like a, a straight progression to minimize the, the craziness of the belts. And kind of a flaw of placing this stuff here is there's not that much extra space here. We only have three squares for belts. So we can't do anything too crazy. Um, a lot of this stuff's going to have to move in the, the near future. Also, we're going to need to set this up to stop dumping copper. Because we have other uses for it. I actually kind of want to stop it dumping now. So we'll have a, a build-up that we can test. So one thing to look at with the alloys is the machines are actually faster with the alloys. So if you see here, uh, in four seconds, we'll need 12 tin ingots to make 120 molten tin. Well, on here, in the same four seconds, we actually need a total of 24 uh, units and then outputting 240. So uh, the ratio is actually different when doing these alloys. We only need the one induction furnace rather than the two. But regardless, I'll just copy the same pattern since it works fairly well. Then we'll adjust it. Oh, oops, it looks like I made uh, too many steel, steel gear wheels here as well. That might explain where some of the resources went. Well, reverse factory to the rescue. <laughs> It's one of those things that can't be done. Sadness. We'll just have to use them slowly. Um, if you're wondering why I use so many wooden crates, it's like, why not just use the bigger ones? It's like, well, that's part of it. If, if I forget to limit the, <laughs> uh, the box, it only fills up so much. <laughs> so that's part of it. It's just, it's cheaper too, but 
Oh well. Well, we will use these eventually. It's just uh, since we're on that time limit with how much sephirite we have left. That's kind of why I don't want to be wasting resources like this, because we only have uh, so many resources left. Now, a lot of times these things are actually uh, inserter limited. And let's create a test thing here. find out exactly by how much. So we need four inputs for copper. 1.3 here. Let's do three for this, two for this. So we already have the copper right here, but we probably need to move these around. Let's see. Hitting this properly might be a little difficult. Also, we want to put this before the copper dump, so the copper dump needs to be the last thing on the list. Until we have a circuit network, we kind of need to orient the belts in such a way uh, that it will make sense logically. So this won't be working quite at full blast, but we also don't really need it to work at full blast. Okay, and out comes our bronze. What do we actually use bronze for? A couple of things. Well, besides the pipes. Pipes are quite useful. I just want to see if we need to put this on a belt or not. So we get used in chemical plants. Piercing around magazines, which is useful. So we actually probably will want to belt it for that, the purpose of that. And the fast stuff, the fluid burn generator, fast inserter. So there are some uses for it. So we probably will need to belt it at some point. Of course, how we do it, not sure. Kind of need all this space right here. Um, but for now, there are a couple things we can do. We can put some assembly machines here. Making those pipes. Because bronze pipe is a tier two pipe. Same with steel. But steel is kind of expensive to make and since bronze uses a bunch of, uh, a bunch of copper, you know, and a small amount of tin. Yeah. It's, it's an efficient use of all that copper overload we're going to have, so we don't want to really do with steel, but um, instead of the max underground length of 11, it's now 15. I wonder if, if they have more health as well. Oh, they do. 150 compared to 100. Nice. So for a temporary basis here, we can just put these uh, pipe builders right here. Just for convenience. Okay. Running fine. What this means is we don't really need to carry around this iron stuff anymore. Maybe iron pipes, perhaps, because we use those to build other things. But no longer the undergrounds or the copper. Copper, put the steel, the iron in there. Excellent. Get to work. Okay. And then the next thing we need after that is uh, just the straight up tin. 
I also probably should put a box somewhere to pick up these resources. That's the end of this episode. On the next one, we're going to get lead and solder produced. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.